So it's Chris Oates, Chi Chang, and George Clayton out for a little nighttime fun. We're uh, doing a, a, a practice shoot on, on night photography and recording it for uh, a little presentation at the Lethbridge Photo Club. So uh, Chris is behind the camera. Chi is beside me here. He's got uh, he's got a setup, and and I got a setup. So we came out a little bit early. Uh, tonight it was a little bit earlier than, than what we saw uh, than what you can see here uh, just because we weren't sure where we were going and uh, we needed some light to, to try to pick a spot and things like that so if you haven't got a pre-planned spot and know what you're doing and have scouted it before you really got to get out at sunset uh, just to uh, just to find out what you're doing and getting a good composition so getting out early is a good thing you need uh, a tripod, you need your DSLR camera, you need uh, the widest lens you have generally for a nighttime, a night sky shoot and uh, the faster the lens the better. Uh, not everybody's got fast lenses so uh, it's still workable and uh, we got a couple of examples that um, that we can show to uh, indicate how to do things so anyways we're uh, we're set up. We're, we we uh, we'll talk about our settings in a, in a little while. But uh, in the meantime, we're just going to wait for the sky to get a little bit darker. It uh, it takes about two hours after sunset for uh, for the sky to get as black as it's going to get for the rest of the night. Okay, so we're in the field. We actually we're on a road, not in the field. And uh, we don't think there's gonna be too much traffic here, but uh, here comes one from the other way. But uh, it's getting darker out now. Our, our uh, settings uh, for our camera should be set up. There's, uh, there's a few things that, that uh, we need to make sure we have. Uh, the first thing is make sure you got a fully charged battery. Uh, when you're doing these night shots because um, generally as you'll see later we'll uh, we'll just put it on to continue a shoot and uh, that gives you a few options you can have a frame of the night sky you can make a star trail or you can make a time-lapse movie uh, you can't do that if you don't have a whole battery and because uh, you don't want to run out in between it's hard to change so full battery uh, the ISO uh, I'm shooting with a lens of, uh, my lens is 1.4, I, I generally shoot at 1.4, 2.8. My, uh, my ISO is generally around 1600. Cheese lens is a 16 to 35 uh, uh, f4, so uh, his lens is a bit slower than, than this lens here. So he needs to make, put his ISO at about uh, 3200 or 6400 depending on on the conditions and, and the night sky uh, generally to start off our shutter speeds are uh, are, are about 20 seconds uh, there's a 500 rule out there where people divide the width of their lens by 500 and it tells you how many seconds you can shoot uh, so after about a year and a half of this I don't believe that rule anymore uh, I still get lots of star trails, even shooting at 20 seconds. So I've lowered, uh, I've increased my ISO and lowered my shutter speed to uh, to at least uh, uh, 15 seconds maximum. And, uh, and that's just to try to reduce the, the movement of the stars throughout your shutter. Um, she can do the same thing. Uh, he doesn't have as much leeway with an F4 lens than you do with an F1.4 lens. Uh, but his, uh, his, mine's a 24, his is a 16, so that lens has a bigger advantage of uh, you can actually shoot longer with that wider aperture. So, so it's a balance, but basically 
you got to try to eliminate star trails and uh, and I would do the 500 rule in minus two or three or four or five seconds if you're out shooting for star trails only and that's all you want to shoot that night it's okay to actually shoot longer and uh, and because you're gonna you're gonna be um, stacking all those photos together to get a star trail shot but it's better to just actually shoot uh, for a single image and uh, and build star trails later. Just uh, so everybody's aware, you should uh, you should focus in manual, and you need to shut off your autofocus uh, either on the lens or on your camera body uh, because what'll happen is if you keep it on autofocus and you and you shoot continuous, at some point in time that that lens is going to try to focus. And uh, I've come home many times uh, where I thought I had some great shots and then after about the first 10, they're all blurred and fuzzy for the next 200. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of time spent out there uh, to capture nothing. So you do that a few times and you'll learn very quickly to shut off your autofocus. that I don't have my remote on right now and I probably won't put it on but uh, normally I would use my remote and then uh, when I shoot continuous I use my built-in uh, inter intervillimeter and uh, and just set it to shoot continuously and she does pretty well the same thing And cheese camera, he's got, uh, he always shoots in live mode, so never ever shooting through the, through the opener here. So we always put our cameras on live mode uh, to focus, to, uh, to review, to shoot. And in this particular case, it levels our camera. So it gives us, um, uh, uh, it tells us our camera is completely level in the composition that she has made. So. Uh, it's better to try to level everything in the field uh, if you can. Uh, these things work great in camera, uh, but sometimes you take uh, uh, a picture and it's uh, completely level here, but it still looks off when, uh, uh, when you get it into late room. So you might have to adjust it a little bit, but this is a very good starting point and uh, we always start with that. Okay, so she says when uh, shows level it turns green, just take it out of the level for a minute. So you can see that uh, it changes. So just maybe put it back to level again. So I don't know if every camera's got these levelers built in. You know? I know most of the newer ones do, but. Um, if you don't, you can get a level that you can put on your hot shoe or, or something, but you need to do something to try to get everything level. Now we've got a nice black sky, we've got nice stars, Orion is uh, beautifully shown in the, in the sky, and uh, we're going we're gonna to focus now. Uh, Okay, so in live view mode, you got to expand the, the image uh, up to tenfold. I can do it with one button on my camera. Some people might have to just keep pressing their button. And you just have to find a star in the sky. So I have one here on my screen. And uh, you can see it's a bit of a blob. And I just, uh, just manually focus on it. It just comes very clear. When you go too far, it becomes blurry again. So I just go back and forth a few times and uh, and you'll get it crystal clear. So with that, it's just simple. Sometimes if, uh, if it's difficult to find a good star in the sky to, to focus on, if you look at distant lights, like we have, uh, I guess we can't move the camera around a bit, but there's uh, red lights on these wind turbines. Uh, we just need to focus on one that's pretty far away and uh, 
and that'll get us uh, a focus from near to far and, uh, and pretty well everything uh, in your image will be in focus. If, uh, if you have a foreground that's really close, uh, you may not be able to get everything in focus uh, with one shot. You might have to uh, do some focus stacking on that. And, and uh, I haven't been able to achieve that yet, but more sophisticated night photographers uh, do a lot of focus stacking, uh, particularly when they got uh, uh, really close objects to their, to their camera. When we left Lethbridge tonight, it was about six Celsius, eight Celsius. We came south to get out of the city lights. And uh, I think Chris mentioned earlier, we're just south of McGrath. And um, up in the hills a bit, we're, we got, we're around these wind turbines and, uh, and the wind blows fairly heavily through here. So right now it's probably only, plus, it's probably about plus three. Uh, temperature wise but with the wind chill it's uh, it's definitely a lot colder than that so um, we have our winter jackets on we got our mitts our hands are a bit frozen already uh, tonight uh, if you're out uh, shooting at night uh, Chris and Chi and I have been out in the in July shooting the night sky and uh, to be honest I usually wear the same winter jacket in July as I do in uh, December, January, and February. So uh, it gets pretty chilly at night, in, uh, even in the summertime. And uh, if you're not comfortable, you don't really want to be out shooting. So, so we just took a picture after we uh, did our manual focus. And uh, you, can, you can see the histogram is, uh, looks pretty darn good for a night shot. Our setting was uh, ISO 3200, 20 seconds f2.8 and uh, looks pretty good so once we're satisfied that that's the composition we want and uh, we're satisfied that uh, everything's in focus so generally what I do is uh, I look at the frame and make sure that uh, all my stars are in focus and they don't look like they are so uh, I would readjust somewhat on these cameras, on Nikons, uh, they generally have a built-in uh, intervalometer. You just set your interval uh, for the length of your exposure plus one second. So for this one, um, my exposure is 20 seconds. I would put it down to 10 seconds here and uh, up my ISO a bit uh, for another practice. So if I added it at 10 seconds and uh, I added one, that means 11 seconds. So that's my interval and then I decide how many shots I want to take so in this example if I'm going to use uh, a number of uh, images for starry landscape stacker I'll, uh, I'll shoot 12 and uh, it'll just shoot them consecutively so you set that and then you just hit start and it'll just start going automatically <laughs> Okay, so once we've taken all our shots and uh, uh, are finished for the night, either we got too cold or we got too bored or we got too tired, uh, we pack up, we go home and uh, we take it and put it in the light room and start processing. So what you see in the back of your LCD panel when you're doing night shots will look nothing like what you see when you put your raw file into your, uh, into your processor and uh, but if your histogram looks good, you should be able to move sliders and uh, you can really make those stars and uh, pop. And if there was a Milky Way out here tonight, uh, we could capture that, uh, you, know, you could make those pop too. So maybe in another segment at another time, we might do, uh, if this one uh, turns out pretty good as a video segment, uh, who knows, we might put the camera on Chris and watch him. Uh, process some of these nice shots. So, for that, we'll call our quits for tonight and uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy this.